Local productions on QTV are made possible with support from viewers like you. Thank you. Hello everybody and welcome to Uncommon Sense. I'm Junia Doan and I'm thrilled you're tuning in today. Because I have as my guest Martina Arroyo. She is a world famous soprano sung at multiple opera houses around the world for more than 20 years and now has started in a new direction. Something that she calls that her life was never the way she had hoped it to be until she started the Martina Arroyo Foundation. So I'm going to ask her, because she was also the recipient of the 2013 <laughs> Kennedy Honor Program, about the foundation because it has such meaning and she was trained as a teacher before all the singing. Yes, that's so true. what exactly is your focus at the foundation? The foundation works with young opera singers that are on their way, but not in the singing part of it. We don't teach voice. We work with the characters that they're playing in the opera. And of course, life has to do so much with how you play a character, how you live your life, and, and how you think about your life. I've always loved working with young people, and I realized that in my own career, I hadn't learned enough about the character. I you hadn't had not worked, learned no, as I had the career, as the career grew, many directors helped me and, and we moved ahead and then I thought, why wait until you're in the career already uh, right. performing, why not learn this while you're studying so that you can make them work together, learning how to sing, learning using the words and making the character be real and that's all about life. Yes, what I've noticed is there's much more acting. Oh yes, on the opera stage yeah, than there was many years ago. And well, of course, the camera right comes right into your face. They want to see expression. And maybe 40 years ago, the emphasis was on how you sound. So what you saw usually was directing traffic. You know, yes. and now they want to see the character grow. They want to see the real feeling come through the body and through the eyes, through the face. I'm amazed. And in the voice. <laughs> yeah, by the way. <laughs> Can you really teach acting well? Are some people better at it than not, oh, just of like course. in movies and stage? Well, of course. There's some voices that are better than others. There are some people that learn sooner than others. Uh, there are some people that need to experience something before they can relive it. Um, but there are those who can also, as they're going along, pick up uh, and begin to feel sooner than others and become better actresses early on, or actors, I should say. Um, it, star it starts with the word, because you get all of your acting from knowing what you're saying. And so often, young people, especially young American uh, artists, think they don't have two languages available to them. It's often in Europe, it's so easy to hop over to Switzerland, Germany, yes. or France, or something. The other languages are not as common as they are, or they are more common in Europe than here. In New York is different, now I should clarify that. New York you hear all kinds of languages. As a matter of fact, you walk along the street in New York and you might not hear English. Sometimes. You know, some, really, on, we walk across 59th Street and we're begging to hear English. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but all the people that are visiting and, and, and coming to see Columbus Square, whatever it be, uh, share their language as well. And the young people are not so afraid of a foreign language in New York because they hear a lot more. Do you find that some people have to work harder because they're an introvert? Oh, sure. Or with any an profession. extrovert? Or, and would you teach them differently? You work with them perhaps differently because you might have to work a little bit longer to make someone really get enough of the meaning of a word out. Some people go too far and you have to roll them in. And part of the, our, pro, our program is to let them find that right place so that it reads truthfully. So the truth is very important. From the, what makes uh, it read truthfully? It has to be the truth. From them? Mm -hmm. Which means when they say, I love you, that if it comes from inside, I really, I love you. It has inflection, love, t you can taste, I love you. If you say, I don't want to see you ever again, 
it, the truth will come in how you say it, the, ex the expression of the words, the expression in your face. So you are asking them to really emotionalize, if there's such a word, to have the experience of the character. And, and <laughs> I don't see how they do it. I you mean, do. You learn how to do it. Yes, but that's a part of our job. And is there a problem in um, after effect that once you're in a role and the performance is over, that it's easier or hard to say, done, I'm back to my life? Depends on the role. When I used to sing Madame Butterfly, it would take all night long and part of the next day before I could pull out of the character. It's a very, very heart-wrenching uh, character, Butterfly herself, yes. what she goes through. It was a little bit easier to come out of a, a comedy role or, uh, well, it depends you do which roles you sing, but it's easier to come out of a lighter role than it is a very dramatic and very close to life as To your life. Like to anyone's life. Oh, did you have anxiety? I mean, every time I read about someone who's really being honest and true, they talk about, I don't know if you call it butterflies, anxiety, just before they go on stage. <clears throat> no, not then. I'm having them right now, though. Oh, <laughs> This well, is much harder for me to well, talk like this. Well, maybe you'll come again. <laughs> yes, I will have them. Gladly. <laughs> <laughs> but on stage, once you get into the living that character, putting on that skin, I always call it, um, I think you are living in it so you don't, you, that person isn't nervous. Or if that person is nervous, then of course you are. But if that person is going through a wonderful experience, if, if it's the truth, you feel the wonderful experience. Now, before performances depends on you. I, I don't have nerves before, but I shake afterwards. That's uh, very useful to know that it, it's almost like a self-test. If you're in the role just Fine. before you go on, and experience what the character's experiencing, mm -hmm. you know you're in the right place um, mentally and physically and emotionally. And it usually works. But after when I think of all the things I would want to do or even think, or just coming out of that character, getting back into my own way of thinking, there's a period of, of nerves. Do you do me. a self-review at the end when you were singing? No, I go out with my friends and have a wine, glass of wine. And live life. And live, yes. Um, one of the things I read about you is you always said, or you said, you had more than your singing. So it wasn't just focused on your singing exactly, your life. And I was curious when I read that. I thought, hmm, I wonder <laughs> at the time what was in your life that you were also focusing on? Teaching. I've always, I'd started as a teacher. Uh, and always, I was always interested in teaching and other people and young singers always loved young singers. Even when I was young myself, I wanted to know what was coming and how could we change things. But uh, when you're moving around a great deal and going from one responsibility to another, one performance to another, it's very difficult to then get become active in that uh, field, in any other field. But um, it's, it's always been an interest and now it's I've almost, and I hate to say this, I'm, I've almost forgotten the performances because I love being with the young people so much and working with them in their performances. Oh, I love that. Well, it's but true. When you, when you were, um, uh, I don't want to say coming up, but you sang in Europe and some other things, that was a good for you approach, right? Has opera changed, which it has, and how? what is it like now for some of your students who plan and hope to make a career in it? Well, I, I think that the younger people are having a much harder time. So many opera houses are closing all over the world. Um, so many opportunities to sing in smaller houses so that you can grow. Those opportunities are shutting down perhaps too, too much, considering how much talent there is out there. There's so much talent out there, wonderful talent. You know, when I hear someone say, oh, we can't find another Aida. Baloney, you're not looking. Yes. But I can find them for you. Are there more people trying to have a career in singing? And incredible number of uh, the, the talent out there is just incredible. And not only in America, but for, in Europe itself, in, from Asia, glorious Korean, uh, Chinese, Japanese singers, glorious. So we've got the rest of the world to now include. I don't know when they're going to come from any other parts that's not yet been discovered, but we have to be ready for it when it happens. What role did your husband play in your career, second husband? <laughs> All of them. 
All oh, of them? Well, let's hear. No, my husband was, had great meaning for me because he was the one person that always told me the truth. Sometimes it was hard to hear. Uh, always, no matter what the truth was, as far as performances went, was always there as a backbone. I knew that I could never fall too far because he'd be there. Uh, what was he? He was. He wasn't. Uh, he wasn't a, a, an artistic person in terms of uh, having a lot to say about what I did. But he did have a lot to say about what he received from what I did, which is um, I don't know if that makes sense. Yes. But he never tried to tell me to do how to do it. But if he got the message, he let me know. If he didn't get the message, he let me know. <laughs> so he was uh, strong-minded. He was a very strong man. Yes. Yes. Very strong. And he protected you. Yes, it is a protection. It is a protection. And I miss him very much. He passed four years ago. Uh, it is uh, in the same position. How, how have you handled this period? One step at a time? I mean, Working hard with the kids. They mean a lot. They, they fill in. They're like my children, many of them. Uh, not of all, of course, because you don't have that type of relationship with everybody. But those that do become part of your family hang out with you and care about you. And did I know you want to have children? I did, but I had three dogs instead. Oh, sometimes they're nicer. No, 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 it can't be nicer yeah. than children. <laughs> but um, there was no time to fit them in or to, you know, to do both jobs well. Yes. So, many, so often if you were a good mother, you didn't have the time to be the good singer and the other yes. way around. And I didn't want to be a poor mother, so. Uh, we instead had Shih Tzus, the, and they uh, had personalities. <laughs> yes. Uh, tell me a little bit about the, the amount of work it takes to do, to sing and make a career in opera. You talked about travel, but there's Travels. preparation, there's getting along with management. <laughs> well, if you're lucky you, and uh, you have someone to help represent you with management. But, you know, I never considered the singing part work because when we say work we mean usually something that you have to do something that uh, for the sake of earning money to live to then live your life i thought my life was singing so um i enjoyed it very very much i loved being out there i think there's a great gift in making someone happy and there are many ways to do that and one is through singing or interpersonal relationships, or, or kindness. Teaching. Or teaching. Or teaching. teaching is so when you watch a young person grab something, get an idea, take it, use it, and run with it, you say, OK, that's something accomplished. You never well, see that with yourself, what? really. Are students different from when you were teaching back in, oh, in high school? Yeah. Oh, yes. First of all, um, many of the young people in the high school situation had to be there. The young singers don't have to be there. They want to be there. And the lovely thing about young singers is that they're glad that you're there. They're grateful for the work. Not all, and to some degrees, some more and some others are less, but they're nevertheless, that's their choice to be there. And uh, there are two programs, right? The summer program and the sort and, of the winter yeah, program. Exactly. And do they do that once? They can do times? it as often as they pass the auditions. Uh, it's a six-week program where we work with the words and language of an opera that they've already learned, the music. Uh, and then we put it together with the characters as strong as they can be, with orchestra, with costumes, and two, two performances, two full performances, just like one you would see at the That's Met. remarkable. And very, very an fine young singers. And in the fall, they work on the character without the performance. They work little by little from beginning to end. This, the point of this is not jumping around singing arias. This is learning the character and the involvement of the character step by step going in a, in a sequence. So they, don't, they start with who she is at the beginning of the opera and with us before the beginning because you are somebody before page one. And they have to know that. They have to know what Mr. Beaumarchais wrote about these characters. They have to know what was going on socially in that town when, when this was happening because it isn't the same as if it's the French Revolution or if it's the American Revolution. 
Interesting. And they must know that. So it's a big study. It's not easy work, and we're not easy on them. But what's so great is that it happens they come out liking it. What, and uh, they come from all over the world. From oh, really? Beijing. Oh, yes, from Australia. What a compliment mm -hmm. to you and the program. Well, I mean, I don't do all the work. My name is on the, yes. the program. But, but the conception and, and but the, the conception follow -through. and But we have 21 teachers, language teachers, uh, movement teachers. Uh, uh, oh, they go through nine, uh, uh, six weeks of every day from 10 until 6 and very often on the weekends as well. No complaints. Uh, they must compare themselves to others in the class. Does that uh, discourage them or encourage them? I don't think um, those young people are discouraged. Remember, they bring egos. They want to be singers, and that uh, includes having the ego to want to be a singer. They know it's not just um, um, packing donuts or something that might not require artistic and uh, uh, artistic, ta any talent. That in, that in this profession, you have to understand that you have a talent and you have a responsibility to that talent. I don't By know which if I'm you making mean? Sense. No, does what? What? What do you teach them about responsibility? To well, some of them have to come with more or less some of that. I'm, I don't want to use the word ego, but confidence. Yes. And sometimes you have to. Some of them will have confidence about one thing, about singing, but not about acting, or more about acting, but less about singing, and we try to give them a balance so that you'll get a complete performance when they get on stage. Oh, that must be so interesting that the foundation has come so far. Yes, we've not only come far, uh, but we are now, um, we're, we're, each year we're adding on something. We started out doing little scenes. We always wanted the whole role to be discussed. That's what was learned. That was what was most important, it was not little scenes, but the whole role. Uh, and since mm. then, we've uh, yeah, young people keep coming back, or they come back and say, I want to learn a particular role for next year for such and such a company. Can I come and work? But um, they have to pass the audition. Every year? Every year. And, and who sits on the committee? Uh, Mark Rucker, who's the head artistic director of the uh, of Prelude, Willie Waters, who's the musical director, myself, who's allowed to be there but not say much, um, and we have uh, certain teachers. And if depending this year, next year we're doing Fledermaus, Mouse, so we'll have definitely have the German teacher listening, um, and we're doing Bohem next year, so there'll probably be the Italian teacher for the Italian language and German language. Um, but we also have the other teachers who come in to the auditions just to see who's coming. We, we listen to over 500 people a year. That's a to lot. To pick 40. <laughs> That's a lot. And we know it's a lot, so it's a responsibility to them. Over what time frame? Uh, three days in December, January, and Feb eight days in February. What Morning do you wish you had, had learned early on that you had to learn going through your career? Well, if you don't know, you don't have it. You, the wishing is now for then. It's silly to waste that time. Uh, I don't. I don't. It's silly to wish that I had had something rather than work to have it and to use it now. If you're still performing, if you know what I mean. Yes, I do I know what I you mean. I don't see regrets or, or. Well, let me rephrase that. What did you think was important? The words. The I words. Think now the words and the character sh should have meant more to me, especially since by nature I'm a ham always important? Well, I think everybody likes a ham. Do you have a, in real life, do you have an outside personality and an at-home personality? Well, I hope not. Um, you'd have to ask someone I live with. Yeah. And that's a bunch of young people who won't talk against me, I promise. No. <laughs> or they leave. <laughs> you know, they're wonderful. I, it, I can, life with young people, for me, is about the best thing that can happen especially if your husband is also there. And you actually have uh, some of the students, or anyway, some young people living with you? No, 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 not living, not sleeping there. They come in and out, they are, they're always there. Um, uh, they're close, they let, me over, they let me know what's happening. I don't do Facebook, but I'm always getting emails about what's happening. Um, but the, you know, I have the one young lady I call my daughter who's been with us since over 20 years, but she's now singing in Europe, and she's singing Wagner. Oh. When we first met, she couldn't go any heavier than 
Mozart Verdi, that was the heavy. Yeah. Now she's into Wagner and doing well. Great growth. So she's like my main daughter. That you see a lot of, or at least email well, a lot. Well, when possible, oh yes. She calls every week. And have you thoughts about what you'd like to do now that you've got the foundation going and it takes, does it take full time or it takes you slice? It takes about you talk 28 about family. hours a day. Yeah. No more than that. That's right there, though. <laughs> well, shows you so. care, though. Of course, you have to care when you work with young people. With any people, you've got to care. I find that everything takes a lot of effort. <laughs> yes, but if somebody tells me they don't <laughs> but care, but it gives you joy get, to, to, to make the effort. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> and I'm not talking like goody two shoes because I'm not goody two shoes. Yes, but I think that that also. It's really helpful for young singers to be around someone like you because you hold the light for them. You know, they've had maybe. not the experience for you, but it gives confidence well, that it can be done. Well, maybe what it does is it says somebody has done it and I want to do it too, whereas they might not have um, help from their homes. They might not have examples around them that, are, you know, when you need that extra bit push, that extra bit of confidence that can do that for them. Some of these young people are doing it on their own, and that's not easy. That is not easy. I had a mother and father who were very supportive, but some of them are really, some of them are thousands of miles away from home. So even if they have parents care, they're not, they're not close enough to give them that extra hug that they need, or kick. What did you, made your parents so wonderful? What made them so wonderful? Yes, in your I don't know, I often think about that. Is it their experience from their parents? I think with my mother it was her lack of uh, many things. She came from, a, from uh, Charleston, South Carolina at a time of, in our history when it was not the happiest moments for them, yeah, really. for her. My father had to work his way into uh, his profession. He was an engineer. Um, and I think that they, their attitude was what I have is not enough. My children must have more. So was there, who did the disciplining? Of course, you never needed it, but who did <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Mischief funny. that you are. Yes, right. Well, both. My father never hit me or, or anything physical, but my mother would lay into me. She'd come right at me, and she was smaller than I am, so it was kind of funny. What did they expect of you? To be a success. And they didn't care what. When I told my father that I was going to be an opera singer, he said, what? And wear those short dresses and kick your legs up? Never. <laughs> I said, no, not a can-can girl, an opera singer. So he finally saw an opera, and he said, well, you want to go around? And she said, he'll get the bread, and you get the fish. That's what you want to do. <laughs> but I'd been singing in the church all my life, so singing yes, was not a... A surprise. No, by any means. Oh, interesting. Did you have to be nagged to do homework? They have to be nagged to do homework. Not nagged, but if encouraged. A, yes, but the encouragement was always there. And did your mother check or your dad check? My dad did. My mother took care of our home, and our cousins used to visit us all the time. We were a family that shared. My, when my uh, father's family came from Puerto Rico, they lived down the street, but they were always in our apartment. Um, we, we were very close. That makes for confidence. That makes for big dinners. <laughs> and a lot of dishes. Oh, yeah. And guess who did those? Well, what were your duties at home? Did you have chores? I always found some homework to do. And get out of. <laughs> well, I had my own chores in terms of keeping my room and things like that. Yes, of course. Yeah. But I didn't have um, not, not, nothing unusual. At least I didn't think it was unusual to be asked to keep you where you live clean. Yes, well, <laughs> there can be pushback on, on things, speaking yeah. as a mother, occasionally. Occasionally. You know, occasionally. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm taken with the good humor that you bring to things. Um, is that a family tradition? You live with people. You want to live in happy circumstances. You want to care about each other. How can you be a, in poor humor all the time or even much of the time? when you care about each other. But your, your father was an engineer. That took yes. a lot of study. Yes. He was a, a working for the government all during World War II. And I didn't see him very much until afterwards. But the point was, 
that um, it wasn't that we had that much money. This, uh, we had to a lot. We had to budget, and I learned how to budget early. Yes, fiscal responsibility at the governmental level or personal level is something that all of us need to practice. Oh. Yes. My mother would be horrified if she saw how I throw away money now. But we don't call it throwing it away. No, I don't call it throwing it away either. She would call it throwing it away and, uh, and would be horrified. Because it's frivolous in her opinion? It's an Certain enough. things would be, but she would never have said don't do it because it's your life and your money. And you pay the consequences for what you do. <laughs> how do you like that for a philosophy? <laughs> yeah, it wakes you right up and grows mm -hmm. you right up. What did you learn in church? that you carry with you now? A lot. A respect for other people. There were many, many good things. I loved the singing in the church, being in yes. the choir. Um, it was for me so, both the social part of my life as well as the religious part of my life. Um, but because I had a father who was Catholic and a mother who was Catholic and then Baptist, because my <laughs> brother became a Baptist minister. And I'm, who this became is all a the Baptist truth, minister? My brother. Uh, after the war, he anyway, that sort of open feeling allow, allows you to take in many ideas without worrying about uh, uh, you about worrying about oh, what do I what would I say without going too far to any extreme because you would you had to accept yes. <laughs> That is really interesting. You've had a wonderful life yes, so I far. Have. We have learned a lot about Martina. Part of life is luck. She had luck with her parents uh, because one, they were there. Two, they were family oriented. Three, they had high expectations. Four, they weren't afraid to say no. On the other hand, there was great encouragement because they or the father anyway, father, <laughs> excuse me, reviewed and helped her with her homework. Always a good thing to do when, when you're learning. But as you heard, the mother made her responsible for her life, how she spent it, and she learned how to be frugal early on. Another good thing for everybody to learn. In her singing part of her life, um, she learned a lot besides languages. She drew people towards her to give her a platform for performance and, uh, and interaction that sustained them and her. And she makes a good point. Know when it's enough. Travel is hard. And as she was trained as a teacher, the idea that you go back to teaching, that you have that to give with you, and that you hope for young people to be bigger and better and, and live life with love and enthusiasm and hope, it's a great gift. So thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you next week. And thank you so much, Martina. It's a joy to have you with us today. To contact Junia, send her an email at info at juniadone.com. For more information, program schedules, and news about future guests, go to www.juniadone.com. Thanks for joining us. See you next time for Uncommon Sense with Junia Doan. Local productions on QTV are made possible with support from viewers like you. Thank you.